Kokuma Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Kruma Media's Polity about his latest column titled, Where There Is No Vision, The People Perish, Proverbs 29, verse 18. When you outline how to develop a vision, you seem to place primary weight on listening. Is that not obvious? You know, everyone says that they listen, but uh, to listen in politics is uh, something that's not obvious because everyone goes to, into elections and political activities with ideas of their own. Now, what I think is important is that you match your ideas to that of the people who you want to help. And you don't automatically know what they need. For example, uh, they don't have electricity or they don't, don't have water, but where you put the water, where you put the electricity, where you put the taps for the water is actually important. And you need to hear from the people in the communities how you plan it. Also, uh, in the beginning, in a lot of rural areas, when the, something happened with the pipes, they hadn't trained people in the communities on how to fix the pipes. So they had to wait for people to come from 30 kilometers away and things like that. So a lot of these problems could be averted if you listen to people first. But also, you know, when you um, have clear ideas in your head, you sometimes think that you, all you've got to do is put them across and convince people. But when you develop a vision, you actually need to um, incorporate in your vision the input of people in communities. And you don't, it's not obvious what the input will be. And when I used to do interviews for scholarly things, I would sometimes go to an interview, I mentioned this in the article, and I would think, you know, I'm not sure if this interview is necessary because I've already spoken to X and Y about the same thing. But then when you listen, if you listen properly, sometimes a person says things that completely blows your way of thinking out of the water and forces you to rethink it. Now, it's the same with politics. And I think that people are a little bit arrogant. They think they know what's good for other people. That is obvious they need this and they need that. But when you hear them, you may have your overall understanding uh, jolted and improved, and it may take on a different character. And you refer to those who act on vision for emancipation learning from two different types of intellectuals, those who have been professionally trained and those who became intellectuals in the struggle. Is it correct to describe both of these intellectuals as intellectual inputs? Yeah, you know, we tend to think that you have to go to university and have a degree and be a professor and all that before you're an intellectual. But some of the most famous people in the struggle, some of the most famous thinkers had very little formal education, if any at all. Like Moses Cortani had no formal education. Walter Sisulu, when he went to jail, had up to standard two. Now, one of his biographers, Anthony Sampson, you said that Mandela used to defer to Sisulu intellectually, that he regarded Sisulu as his intellectual mentor, so that Mandela understood that even though he had all the degrees uh, that Sisulu didn't have, Sisulu had a strategic sense. He had a broad knowledge of history. He had a vision. And that he learned, Sisulu learned that through going uh, to meetings, listening to people, going through training within the ANC. You know, there's a story about Sisulu which is quite funny, you know, he went to hear Dr. Dadu, the Indian Congress and Communist Party leader. And although he wasn't sick, he made an appointment to see Dr. Dadu 
as a doctor because he wanted to meet him. He was so impressed with what he had to say. So Susumu had an inquiring mind. And uh, in the early days of the Communist Party, they used to have night schools uh, where they trained people. They used to take a, a, a wall and paint it black and then use chalk on that wall and used to train people at night. So a lot of people went through the ANC and the Communist Party and they became important thinkers, even though they were not professionally trained in universities or even in schools. So I think the distinction is very important and they are both um, what I would categorize as intellectual thinkers who uh, understood what was going on in the world and in politics. And lastly, can you clarify how you're using passion and how it relates to thinking in developing a political vision? Well, you know, when you try to understand um, what people mean when they say the ANC has changed and it's betrayed mm. people and all of that. Now, my understanding is that there were a lot of people who uh, were very brave at one point. They had seen how their parents had been humiliated with the past laws and all of these things. And they felt a sort of passion to remedy that, to avoid people getting humiliated, people like their parents, but also people they never even knew. And they got involved in the struggle because of not just understanding, they had to look for an organization that had a remedy for the problem. But sometimes you understand what's going on, but you still don't act on it. You need to have feelings about it. They had those feelings. Now, I think that that passion is no more in the ANC, especially if you think, for example, just one example, when money was diverted from poverty relief to pay for an candler, the ANC voted for that in Parliament. Many of those people who voted for it had once been very brave. They'd worked in places like Lesotho, which, you know, your life was in danger every single day. And they had been very brave that some of them had been tortured, been in prison and so forth. But uh, they went cold, you know, and sometimes it's because they've been tempted with money and they now think that's more important. I don't know the reason. In fact, it's hard to know because some of these people I knew, uh, well, I, I still know, I knew them very well. I knew them as uh, people who really believed in the struggle. And now I think the, the flame has gone out. Thanks, Raymond. Thank you. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's Polity about where there is no vision the people perish. Proverbs 29 verse 18.